the requirement to disseminate information in topologies is central to the successful operation of connected networks. Flooding is such technique. But unless flooding is done mindfully and using some kind of smart measures, it tends to cause broadcast storms. In this module, first we'll convince ourselves that flooding is indeed a requirement. Then we'd look at a scenario in which uncontrolled flooding can take place. Then we'd look at one of the earliest proposed mechanisms by ARPANET to handle the problem. The reference that I've chosen is Bertsikus and Gallagher in their classical book, Data Networks. So what is flooding? Flooding is a transmission mechanism in which a node broadcasts its information on all its outgoing links to disseminate information to its neighbors. It sends this information to its neighbors. The neighbors in turn send it to their neighbors. Using this mechanism, the information gets disseminated to all nodes in a topology. Let's look at a situation which is uncontrollable. If the transmission of messages never terminates, this is an unpleasant, unwanted situation because what we are interested in is if the information is once disseminated to all the nodes in the network, the activity should stop. Visually, we can think about a scenario in which we have nodes connected as 1, 2, and 3 in tandem, and 3 is directly connected to 4 and 5, which are in again connected to each other. Now, if a link failure of 1 to 2, link between 1 and 2, is detected and it is communicated to node 3, node 3 shall send this information to node 4 and 5. Node 4 receives this from 3, sends it to 5, which in turn sends it to 3. 5 receives initially from 3, sends it to 4, which sends it to 3. 3 sends it to 5. Apparently, this looping will never stop. ARPANET proposed a simple solution, that is, depending on the information that is being sent, both the sender and the recipient should maintain some information that is pertinent to this broadcasting. If each message that is once broadcasted and disseminated has to be stopped from further transmission, sequence numbers have to be used. That means the sender assigns an initial sequence number to the broadcast message and the receiver receives the message, appends or increments the sequence number and sends it forward. Using this mechanism can prevent the indefinite transmission because the comparison of the sequence numbers would yield that this packet is a stray packet that is continuously being sent and resent into the network. The operation can be understood like, say a node J receives a message which was sent by node I. If the sequence number that it currently has is more than the message that was last received from I, it means it has received some update from node I. So the message is stored as an update into the memory. And it is transmitted to all the subsequent neighbors, except for, of course, node I. If it is not the case, it means the sequence number that is, it has just received is smaller than the sequence number which it currently has, and the packet is discarded.